Welcome to your second lab in Physics 185. Today's lab will continue to build a mathematical foundation that will be very useful to you throughout the rest of the semester. What we are going to do today is consider how we represent information in the form of graphs and then how we can actually extract information from those graphs about objects that we may be observing. The first exercise that you're going to do today is just a little bit of practice. You're going to measure the speed of the car. And what you will be given is you will be given a series of data points that tells you where the car is located at a particular instant in time. What you will be asked to do is graph those data points. And so you will have a graph where the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is distance. For many exercises this semester, we will use a spreadsheet to help us represent that information and today's lab is no different. You can certainly use Excel and the graph, graphing features in Excel, which are described to you in the lab manual associated with this particular lab. If you go ahead and plot your data points that you will have obtained for the, the motion of a car, you will get something that looks very similar to this. And when you have a series of lines, what you may be able to do is draw a best fit line through those data points. Excel will also be able to do this for you, and this lab will take you through some of the instructions to use Excel to draw a line for you. If we look at the line and you remember a little bit about your high school math class, you may remember that one of the things you were asked to do when you had a line was to graph that line. And so you would pick two points on that line. You would look at the change in the Y component of that line, and divide that by the change in the x component. It may have been called the rise and the run, and you were told that the slope was equal to the rise over the run. If we look at what the rise represents on this graph, the distance is equivalent to the rise, and if we look at what the run represents on this graph, that's the same as the time. So the slope for this graph, which we would write as rise over run, is really the same thing as saying we're looking at the distance divided by the time. And if you remember from last week's lab, the distance divided by the time was really the speed of the object. So by graphing the position of that car as a function of time and finding the slope of that line, you can use that information to find the speed of the car. We can then extend this to astronomical objects. And so the next thing that you will look at would be the motion of a star across the sky. The difference between a car moving along a road is that you have an actual distance that you can measure. When you look at the motion of the stars across the sky, we can't really measure a distance because we don't know how far away that sky is from us. You'll talk a little bit about the celestial sphere in the class, and the celestial sphere just appears to be this big bowl that's set down on top of a flat earth, even though we know the earth is not, is not flat. And so the way we'll measure the, the motion of an object on the celestial sphere is we'll actually measure it in terms of angles. You can do the same thing then for a star, where you will track the angular position of a star over a period of time and do a very similar thing for that star. So that you may find, rather than plotting actual distance, you may plot the angle as a function of time. And doing the same slope, the same calculation, what you will find is you will find an angular speed. So for example, you may determine that the, the star travels 20 degrees every hour. Now if you think about how long it would take a star to go once around the sky, a complete circle takes 360 degrees, and so if a star is moving 20 degrees every hour, and you take 360 degrees by 20 degrees per hour, what you would get is you would get about 18 hours for the length of the day on this particular planet. So one of the things you'll be able to do in virtual astronomy is be able to find the length of the day on this virtual planet where you are tracking the motion of the star. You will also be able to do a similar type of behavior for the motion of the moon, where you will also track the motion of the moon over a period of time. 
Let me just show you a couple of things about these different labs. When we look at the motion of the star across the sky, notice what is happening here. It will give you a time and it will give you the degrees. Remember zero hours would be zero. Remember 30 minutes is half an hour. So when you would plot this, rather than entering this in as 30 minutes, I would add it, enter it as 0.5 hours. One, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so on. And then you have the angular position of the star in the sky. Now one of the features that, that appears in this particular lab, which you will encounter many times over the course of the semester, is a feature called check your answers. And so if I click on, if I open up the check your answers box, notice what it's asking you is it's asking you to find the speed of the car. And so you would enter the speed of the car you found by finding the slope of your line. You would enter in the angular speed of the star. Again, you would have gotten that from your graph. You would enter the length of the day. This is the exercise we did where it moved 20 degrees per hour and it's 360 degrees in a circle. Um, we were measuring a star, so remember if we're looking at a sun, we refer to that as solar. If we're thinking about a star, we refer to that as sidereal. And then finally, the orbital period of the moon would be a similar exercise. Once you figure out the, the speed of the moon, you would determine how long it takes that moon to move, make a full orbit around um, the planet. Good luck with the lab. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.